Hello everyone and welcome to this video which is in our Re-Engineering the Chess Classic series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we're taking a look at a funny little game between Frank Marshall and Richard Teichmann at Monte Carlo 1903. Um, one of the openings, uh, you may know that um, I used to, uh, to do openings for the TCC Super Final and uh, well, there are always a couple of openings that, um, well, both uh, my bookmaker colleague uh, Jeroen and uh, myself tried to get um, working. Um, one of them was the uh, was the Grunfeld, and the other one was the um, uh, was the Queen's Gambit declined, and those openings were pretty difficult to uh, to generate imbalance in. Um, it sort of turns out that you know even the worst Queen's Gambit declined was often uh, good enough for the engines to hold. And um, well, I, I once uh, took a, a position from um, uh, the game short against uh, Ulf Anderson, which uh, Nigel uh, playing white for once actually, uh, where he whereas he was normally a, a Queen's Gambit declined expert as black, but uh, he, he he called it absolutely disgusting for black and uh, well i mean uh, stockfish drew it with ease against uh, uh, komodo in the um, uh, in the super final and um, yeah uh, stockfish i think won in uh, a very very long game but it was uh, anything but convincing very hard to uh, to do this and uh, well this game is uh, quite similar because teichmann does some truly horrific things on the black side of a queen's gambit declined um, and still emerges as the winner so let's have a look how it goes. So d4, d5, c4, c6, actually a Slav move order. Um, knight c3, knight f6, and then bishop g5 from uh, Marshall. This is going to be a very strange move order, but we're going to head back to a, um, um, a uh, Queen's Gambit decline classical. Um, in actual fact, this is quite inaccurate, and uh, d takes c4 is actually quite decent for, uh, for black here. Um, yeah, um, black follows up with b5, and uh, it's actually quite tricky for, um, for white to get this pawn back safely. Um, but, um, well, knight bd7, slightly oddly, was played by, um, by Teichmann. Knight f3 and then e6. And now Marshall played e3. I think he also played, um, I, I think I've even analysed the game with this, uh, where uh, Marshall played the move uh, e4 here. But um, uh, e3 is uh, pretty standard. And, um, well, now uh, Teichmann decided that instead of playing the, um, the bishop to e7, which would be a, a normal Queen's Gambit declined uh, classical, he decided to experiment a little bit and he put the bishop on d6. Not bad um, necessarily, yeah, looks a little bit like a semi-slav and um, well there are plenty of systems where after c takes d5, e takes d5, um, um, in modern chess you know black's trying to put the bishop on d6 rather than e7. Um, uh, actually, um, you know, Stockfish 8 against uh, Alpha 0 was uh, in these Queen's Gambit uh, decline positions was putting the bishop on d6 rather than e7. So it uh, was kind of ahead of its time. When I, when I saw those games, I wasn't very impressed. I just thought it was a bit of a, a bit of funny Stockfish stuff. But, um, well, yeah, <laughs> somehow in the modern game that's uh, also happened. But when White hasn't yet taken on d5, it's a little bit more risky. And, um, well, certainly what, um, um, what uh, Teichmann does next is truly horrible. Uh, because after bishop d3, he played the move queen e7. And, um, well, this is never good, um, really. Not when um, uh, you've got this pin on the knight on, uh, on f6. Because uh, the point is, you know, um, well, with the queen on e7, yeah, obviously you can't move a knight on f6. And it's just really hard to, to get this unpinned. I mean, are you going to go h6 and g5 and weaken your king side? Or are you going to move your queen away? But, well, the only square you've really got is if you castle and play the queen to e8. But you don't want to do that either. And um, so it's a very, this is um, um, a very, very uh, uncomfortable uh, position for the, uh, for the black queen and bishop when white's got a bishop on g5. So really quite horrible here. I mean, actually, uh, in this position, um, uh, which engine was it? I think Stockfish wanted to play bishop e7, which, um, well, you can imagine uh, that's uh, not a, a great indication of confidence in the position. So... Um, um, well, after Queen e7, uh, Marshall did something maybe a little bit uh, strange. I mean, simply castles looks very simple and then just give black, uh, you know, let black worry about what to do when uh, when e4 comes in or anything like that. Actually, the engines were looking at h6 and g5 here. Um, actually, bishop g3 and then f takes g3 was uh, 
what um, uh, yeah, both Stockfish and Dragon were, were looking at, just uh, opening up the F file against this weakened knight on F6, because obviously the pawn isn't on G7. And uh, well, Stockfish beat uh, Dragon from this position, uh, yeah, managed to draw against Dragon as, uh, as black, but just looked tremendously uncomfortable. Um, Marshall took on D5, um, which is not too bad. Um, but maybe a little bit premature. There wasn't much need for it, really. And then uh, after e takes d5, played the move queen c2. Not bad again. Um, again, the engines are, are looking at, um, uh, at this sort of idea. Yeah, not caring about the uh, e3 pawn. And um, uh, if you go knight b6, then a, a rook's pawn starts marching up. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, stockfish beat dragon from this position and... Uh, uh, did Dragon manage to beat? Uh, oh, actually, Stockfish beat Dragon twice from uh, from this position. I mean, you just uh, you just line up basically. Rook f1, Knight e1, uh, coming round to uh, to c2, and we're going to go for b4 at some stage. Yeah, very very unpleasant for uh, for Black here. But um, Marshall played uh, Queen c2, which is not bad. Um, the idea is if castles, we've got uh, Bishop takes h7 check, exploiting that pin. So, um, well, I thought I thought Teichmann really did uh, a, a good job here. Um, he didn't go uh, h6 and g5, which, um, you know, was uh, was possible. He played the move queen d8. And what is Teichmann intending to do? He's intending to play bishop e7 and then castle. So this is what I was talking about in the introduction about the queen's gambit um, uh, decline. Because I think in that game, Short Anderson... Um, I think Black had played uh, the bishop to d6 and played queen to a5. And then what the engines did was play queen to d8 and bishop to e7. You know, so uh, we're actually going to get something quite similar to uh, to that game, I think. So um, uh, e4 was played by uh, by Marshall. Never one to uh, let the, uh, the grass grow under his feet. D takes c4, knight takes e4. Now, um, yeah, I mean, Teichmann could have uh, tried bishop b4 check and then h6 and castles. That wouldn't have been bad at all. But he played bishop e7 and then castles and um, now played the move h6. A um, little bit risky. Uh, castles is what the engines wanted. And they just want to uh, uh, give up a pawn basically like this. Takes king h8 and just claim, well, I've got the two bishops. Your extra pawn's an isolated pawn. Must be all right. Yeah, it looks vaguely like uh, like decent compensation for uh, for black. Um, but uh, Teichmann played the move h6, obviously looking for uh, uh, something like uh, bishop h4, then um, you can just castle. But um, Marshall had something else in mind. Um, the engines think that uh, taking like this would be better, um, just to play like this. Uh, but again, it's one of those positions where, um, um, uh, in principle, you know, the engines are happy to give away that pawn on uh, on uh, on e on e6, uh, have a bishop against a knight and a weak pawn. And I think here we've even got queen d5 hitting a2. So uh, you know, that's that's kind of uh, yeah, not going to be bad at all. I mean, rook e4, queen a5, b3. It's a slight edge for white uh, because this pawn is weak. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think you don't put too much effort in defending it. You just try and target d4 and uh, nah, you should be all right. But Marshall played much more excitingly and uh, rook e1. And that, you, I mean, you do get the feeling that he was really trying to, to force stuff, right? Uh, but, you know, if you look at what uh, Teichmann has done, bishop d6, queen e7, and then queen d8, bishop e7, and his king still isn't castled, I can thoroughly understand... Uh, um, you know, Marshall's uh, feeling that, yeah, come on, I've got to be able to prove something here. But, um, yeah, I mean, there is this thing about the Queen's Gambit decline that uh, it is an unbelievably solid uh, opening. And you see enough engine games from bad versions of the Queen's Gambit decline that you give them. And, uh, yeah, yeah, just uh, they still manage to make a draw under the most unpromising circumstances. So um, HG would have been nice, but um, it wouldn't have actually led to a great deal. Um, the engines tend to think that this is just um, going to be a draw by, uh, by some sort of, um, of repetition. So um, uh, King G8, Knight E6, Queen B6, Bishop C4, Rook H6, and then this was actually the, the draw by repetition here. Just uh, You can't do, you know got to cover this uh, this bishop on e7 you can't allow knight f7 checks either so yeah just uh just a, a quiet sort of uh, sort of draw there 
Uh, I mean, you could try and uh, win the rook in the corner with a discovered check, but it's not, yeah, it's a little bit dodgy, really, because, uh, well, the knight's not getting out, and you've already got two pieces for the rook there. So, uh, yeah, not recommended. Uh, but uh, Teichman just played castles, and the engine says, yeah, that's that's absolutely fine. Not much wrong with it. And um, after bishop h4, Teichman just started exchanging off pieces. And, um, yeah, this is this, of this has often happened to me, I have to say. I mean, I've played the white side of these uh, Queen's Gambit declines for... Uh, for all my career, really. And, uh, you know, you often do get a bit shocked that, um, you know, I feel like I should be 10 tempi up somehow in this position. But, uh, well, I mean, black's going to go knight f6, get the bishop out, and then it's not looking that bad at all. You know, it's uh, really, really weird somehow. Um, but Frank, attacking player, and, and I'm sure, you know, um, very much triggered by the fact that um, uh, that you know you, you just sort of feel well I must have something because Black's wasted so much time. Really kept on uh, attacking here and very interesting what he did, but um, maybe not quite uh, the best. Uh, would have been better maybe just to be a little bit more sensible. Maybe move like H3 to uh, to stop the bishop coming out to G4. And after knight f6, yeah, maybe just something sensible like rook e5 and then uh, rook e1. Stay centralised and, um, and uh, yeah, just make sure that you've got a, a decent position. Maybe you can uh, move the queen out of the way and, uh, and line up on the long diagonal as well. Um, Marshall played rook e1, knight f6 and rook h4. Um, bishop e6 played. Um, and now knight e5. In we go. And uh, Teichman played rook e8. Um, I mean, I think um, you know if you if you follow this series on uh, on Teichmann, you, you sort of notice how very very calm, quiet, um, methodical player really. Um, well, quiet's the wrong word, but uh, you know when he was playing these Queen's Gambit declines, he liked just getting his pieces. Uh, we saw this in the game against Rod Levy as well. He just likes getting his pieces, you know, on good squares, nice squares, not looking to do too much, and uh, and only then have a look at what he can do later. And, uh, well, I think the Queen's Gambit decline suited him, you know, very, very well as uh, as Black. So, um, rookie three played by uh, by Marshall, and, uh, well, he is he's going for it. He's going all the way there. Um, rook d8 played by uh, Teichmann, just centralising his pieces. Um, pretty, you know, cool-blooded really, not not really worrying about what's happening there. Rook g3, and now um, an interesting moment because uh, yeah, the engines are just saying, well, king f8 here, and after queen c1, knight g8, just roll up in a ball there, um, cover any sacrifices on uh, on h6 here. And after rook f3, uh, interestingly enough, what they want to do is to play uh, the move uh, g5. Um, just avoiding this uh, knight g6 here. Uh, this rook's uh, in a little bit of uh, difficulty here. So actually this was, uh, funnily enough, um, an engine uh, draw. I, I have to say uh, this would cost me uh, quite a bit of time to, uh, well, for, for either colour, to be honest. One, to be sure that is this really a draw? And uh, second, to um, uh, to check with Black that I'm not actually uh, losing the whole house here. But um, yeah, the engines uh, think that um, that this is es completely escapable for um, for Black. Of course, you're threatening stuff like uh, Queen takes d4, breaking through here as well. Um, but um, Teichmann came up with something quite uh, interesting. He played the move Bishop f5 here. Um, which was probably a little bit of a shock for um, for uh, Frank Marshall. Now it gets quite interesting. I mean, um, Queen C1 is the uh, the engine's best move here, and uh, what does that do? That threatens Queen takes H6, um, and it also covers the back rank because the back rank is the thing that's really awkward. So if uh, Bishop F5. Um, you can play a move like, for example, rook takes c5, and if d takes c5, then queen d1 check is going to be uh, mate there. So it's, uh, it's a very neat move by uh, by uh, Teichmann, very nicely spotted. Um, queen c1 um, is what um, uh, the engines wanted, king f8, and now this move knight takes f7. So basically trying to avoid this rook takes c5 trick. And um, um, and then just win a pawn by taking on f5 afterwards. And uh, um, yeah, so Queen B four is what um, um, is what the engines wanted, threatening Rook E one, and after Knight E five we go Rook D four, quite sharp. Takes takes Knight takes C six, 
bc6 bishop f5 queen b2 obviously you can't take on uh, b2 because of rook e1 and after queen c5 we go king g8 h3 queen a2 and uh, well you know um um yeah you know you're going to manage to exchange off uh, the queen somehow maybe white will get both pawns but uh, it's the wrong colored bishop for the rook's pawn so pretty good drawing chances for black in uh, in that one um queen d2 was played by um by marshall but that's a little bit more tricky it um um it gives black uh, an extra resource which um uh, teichman takes he was a, he was a good tactician uh, teichman plays the move knight e4 and now uh, Marshall went completely, completely bananas, really. Um, you just have to take on e4 here. And, uh, well, we play rook takes e5, exploiting that, um, that pin. Uh, you go bishop d3. And, um, well, you know, we, we, we're sort of, um, we're sort of uh, surviving here as, um, as, uh, uh, as, um, as, as white, really. You know, we're not uh, getting back rank mated. Um, bishop d3 we can uh, you know take the rook and uh, or actually we, we could take on e5 by um, uh, just uh, differently there um, queen e7 is the uh, is the very best move for black here um, you're counter-attacking on h4 so if you go d takes c5 i go queen h4 and now we've got the, the lovely little sharp rook takes g7 check king f8 rook g3 and um, yeah threatening queen h6 but then black goes rook e1 Queen takes h4 and queen d4, and the engines uh, agree to draw in this position. Um, yeah, I mean, really, uh, some some lovely little tactics in there, you know. But black's, you know, white's back rank is just really, really weak. I mean, black could also just play bishop e4 here, rook e4, rook e5, and do it this way. And uh, well, this is a, a slight advantage for uh, for black as well. So. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, this obviously turned out quite nice for uh, for black and uh, well, these rooks are lovely, but um, they're not really achieving very much. But here, uh, Frank Marshall went really a bit bananas, um, and uh, I think this was really what he improved, uh, you know, not, um, a lot as his career progressed. You know, um, in the same way actually that Rudolf Spielmann, uh, another great attacking player, you know, also became more positional, and you could also uh, project that example onto Tal, you know, who moved from the 1960. Uh, um, non-stop attacker to um, um, you know the much more positional uh, player who uh, who went you know more than a hundred games undefeated um, in in the um, in the seventies I think it was um, but uh, here Marshall took on e4 bishop e4 and it makes no sense at all um, he played the move queen f4 hitting the bishop and hoping for uh, something ooh, queen takes f7 maybe bishop d5 he had a thought of playing something like uh, queen f5 who knows. But um, simply f5 is, is really, really strong here. Um, because uh, if you go bishop e4, I go queen d4. And uh, it just seems, you know, that, um, uh, that yeah, this, this idea of Marshall was based more on, yeah, I don't know, emotion than, uh, than anything else. Um, he played bishop c4 check, king h7 happened. And, uh, well, now he, he went completely bananas, actually, because uh, he played the move knight f7, which um, simply allowed the move queen takes f4. And, uh, well, Marshall resigned in uh, this position. Sudden uh, collapse there, but, um, but you know, actually very, very interesting. I mean, uh, I, I said I was very interested to see how much leeway Teichmann had uh, in the Queen's Gambit declined um, to waste time, you know, and uh, still be able to then exchange off pieces and remain with a solid position. Really mirrors what, uh, what I'd seen in, uh, in uh, yeah, the engine games where we try and give the engines uh, awful things to play. And uh, yeah, it was also nice to see uh, the way that uh, Teichmann plays. Just very, you know, just um, uh, not ignoring anything, but placing his pieces well and trusting that um, uh, that there will be some way of uh, of dealing with whatever happens. And um, well, it certainly happened in this game because uh, yeah, this move bishop f5 uh, was uh, was pretty nice. I, I I thought. And after queen d2, knight e4, very good tactics. Just exploiting that back rank. And of course, Marshall just panicked, and um, and that was a very nice win for uh, for Teichmann. So we are. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, why not give a like, subscribe to the channel, take a look at my new book, Reengineering the Chess Classics, written together with my childhood coach Steve Giddens. Really, really good book. So do take a look at that. I think it's still, still possibly uh, still uh, reduced on uh, forward chess. So do take a look at that. And otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching, and uh, hope to see you at the next videos. 
Uh, by the way, I saw that um, the uh, uh, the chess.com CCC has uh, the, uh, the the main event of the um, uh, of the rapid has started. So Leela, Torch, Stockfish, all there. So um, I'm keeping an eye on that. If there's some good games there, we'll have a look at those too. Thanks very much, everyone.